Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to be starting a series, and this is the first interview in the series about domestic violence awareness. Um, the month of October in the United States is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and as a survivor of domestic violence and, um, you know, someone who has known a lot of people who were in uh, relationships uh, that were domestic violence related, I felt it was really necessary for me to create a series uh, based on, you know, my experiences, their experiences, and other people's experiences um, to kind of help elevate awareness about domestic violence. It's a very big problem in the country and, and honestly all around the world. Um, when I came up with the idea of doing this interview series, I thought I would just interview two people and, you know, have a couple of experts talk about mindfulness and how mindfulness can play a part in domestic violence awareness. And I only went into two different groups and posted that I was looking for speakers and the response I received was overwhelming. As such, I have decided to speak to every single person who has um, expressed interest in talking to me about this because it is such a prevalent problem. It is a very big problem that a lot of people really don't pay attention to, and it's something that we really need to spend more time paying attention to. And, you know, it's really, really important, not just for, you know, women, but for men, for children, for adults. I mean, domestic abuse is a huge problem, and it, it goes far beyond just spousal abuse. So, you know, in this interview series, we're going to be talking with different people who've had different experiences and who are working now as advocates to help stop domestic violence. And, you know, I really hope that you'll stick around and, and check out the series and check out all these wonderful people that I'm interviewing and, and see the, the positive and wonderful messages that they're sharing because, uh, you know, it's, they're all messages of hope. And that's kind of what I'm going to call this series is messages of hope, because I want people to understand that, yes, this problem is real. And yes, you may be stuck in a relationship where you are being abused, or maybe you know someone who is in an abusive relationship, but there is the possibility to come out of it. Um, I know there are a lot of people in the world who really aren't that lucky. I mean, every single day, uh, someone is killed from domestic violence. And we really need to bring this uh, problem to light and, and realize that it's a hell of a lot bigger than we think it is. And we really need to start the dialogue to talk about the problems in society where we just kind of hush hush and brush everything under the rug. So and I really hope that you'll join us in the series and listen to the stories, the stories of hope, the stories of survival, and, and all the wonderful things that these people have to share. So with that, um, today, my first interview is a, a, with a woman. Her name is Beauty Camacho. Um, she lives on the beautiful island of Guam, and she is a domestic abuse survivor. And she also has, um, you know, started a company called Beauty Co Labs. And she's written a book that's going to be published soon about self-love, because um, I think, you know, it's something that I've talked about before. When you're in an abusive relationship, the people, they just beat you down. And that's why you stay in an abusive relationship is because you really just kind of feel like you have no choice. You have no, no other options. And, you know, even if you get out of that relationship, your self-worth is shattered. And so, you know, beauty's really working hard to try and, and twist things around and, and, you know, make things a little bit better for people who uh, have gone through uh, domestic violence and abuse and, you know, trying to make their lives a little bit better. So um, if you're interested in hearing what she has to say, stick
Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Crystal Castle, and I'm here today with the amazing Beauty Camacho. Is that how you say it? Yes, that's actually correct. <laughs> um, you know, I was taking a look at your website, and I see you have a book coming out. Yes. Is it out yet, or is it on its way to being out? Yes, on its way. Awesome. So the, um, the subject of the book is, you know, um, what, what, what was it? The title? Yeah, so it's uh, Beauty with a D and Autobiography, and it has like an inner beauty makeover kit. Um, I, I really think that's awesome. And, and I have a feeling that, you know, it's kind of along the lines with the book that I just published this year. So I just published a book called Nourishing Mind, Body and Spirit, A Healing Journey to the Higher Self. Ooh, nice. It's basically a book about, about self-love. Because, you know, a lot of the things that I went through in my life, I, I hated myself. I, I absolutely hated myself for things that other people did to me. And because of that, I tried to destroy myself. And after speaking with you a little bit, you know, it seems like maybe you and I have kind of had a lot, and a lot of things in common. And one of the things that you know, we were talking about on my YouTube channel this month for um, October in the United States is National Domestic uh, Violence Awareness Month. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize just how prevalent domestic violence is um, everywhere in the world. It's not just in the United States. And right. really now with and a lot of people being stuck at home in quarantine, uh, the rates of domestic violence have skyrocketed and uh, yep. the suicide rates have tripled. And I know that, you know, you and I are kind of along the same lines where I in my life have attempted suicide multiple times. And I believe you said that you have also attempted suicide. And, you know, I just like to talk a little bit about where you were and where you are now and, you know, a little bit more about the book because hey, I have a feeling that the book. Hey, is a lot of stuff Love you. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, man, it's, it started for me when I was young, um, about middle school age. And before I had the ideation, um, I just had so many things happen to me, sexual abuse, grooming, um, different things that I wouldn't really understand why it was happening to me. And then, of course, there's just the pressures of middle school and having good grades. And I was the um, oldest grandchild. So I'm also the oldest child in my family. And that, that also puts a lot of pressure on you, on a person. And um, hi, but yes, <laughs> my little one's right in front of me. And um, it it really tormented me because I kind of was always wondering like, why me? Why does this have to happen to me? Why am I the one always getting pressured into doing certain yes. things? Why am I, um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, Crystal, there's That's everybody okay. just coming in. But uh, can, we, can you let those guys know that I'm just recording real quick, Kate? Okay? And um, there, were, there were moments where I would, just always feel that inner turmoil and not understand what, you know, what the reasons were. And of course, at a, at a tween aged, as a, as a tween aged girl, you're kind of like, what is this going to be the rest of my life? Am I going to have to endure all of these thoughts and feelings? And if it is, I don't want it. Yeah. You know, so I had that ideation um, and I attempted around the age of 13. And I just remember like hovering over my wrist, like, OK, if I'm so tired of this, why can't I do it? Why am I not able to attempt or why am I not able to continue with with this? I guess this is really just something that I, I don't want. It's just an idea. So what I did was I used my creativity and I kind of just turned it around and I was like, you know, I, I feel a bit stronger. I, I, I know I'm creative. I know I can do better with my life. I know a lot of people love me. So what I'm going to do is just use my creativity. And instead of hurting myself, I tattoo or what I would do would be um, I take a marker instead and then just draw my signature on my wrist rather than um, you know, induce self, any self-harm. So I really just channeled my creativity and I was like, you know what, 
I, I know I'm loved. I know that I can, I'm probably going through this because I'm going to have to help somebody else in the future. And that's, that's always how everything's been. Just because I'm going through something because of what I'm going to be able to assist people with in the future. And that's what my book is also filled with is different strategies on how people can um, implement them to kind of just move through those phases of their life and heal a little bit better, as well as um, understand what they're going through is also for, or for, for them to help themselves first, as well as to help other people. Right. I think for a lot of people don't realize just how important the healing process truly is. Um, as someone who lived with the victim mentality for a really long time, which was why I was killing myself. So, you know, I, I actually attempted suicide, but then, you know, when I was older, I was killing myself with food and alcohol, um, you know, which is another form of self-harm. And a lot of people don't realize that. And, you know, I just kept like replaying the same things over and over and over in my head. And that was what kept causing me to just relive, you know, and, and basically live in the victim mentality. Right. And so when I finally, I had what the drunks call a moment of clarity, I realized like, oh my gosh, like this is terrible. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself and that something needed to change. So I quit drinking and when I quit drinking, I, I, so I drank in order to sleep at night, right? Cause I couldn't sleep because of all of the, all of the thoughts and everything that would come mm-hmm. in. And so mm-hmm. when I quit drinking, I was like, okay, now what am I going to do? <laughs> Cause the, the thoughts are still there. Right. 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 And that's when I really started to understand that I needed to heal. And through that healing process, I've learned a lot of different things. And so, you know, it's been um, actually tomorrow will be uh, 19 years sober for me. Wow. And yeah. So, Congratulations. Um, oh so, my gosh, you just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> but through the 19 years that I've been, you know, going through my sobriety and, and I'm still healing, you know, there's still a lot of trauma that comes up that I'm, that I'm working through. Even 19 years later, um, I think that we really learn that there's a lot that we have, that we've been through, and we know how to get through that we can share with others to help them to heal too, which I think is really important. So, you know, that being said, what, what would you say would be the biggest thing that you went through that helped you to understand um, how to heal yourself and then how to help others? Oh, wow. Okay. So I I have been through a lot, even as a child. But I think the one that helped me the most was the one that I was holding on to the longest, which was trying to maintain a healthy relationship with a really toxic person. So the the father of my children, we, we were in a relationship for almost 10 years. And you know, like the, the idea of him being a better person and um, <laughs> the idea of him being a better person and um, okay, one, one moment, buddy. And um, just the just the thought just the thought of um, you know what what I had in my head, the picture I had of our relationship in our in my head. Um, that's what I held on to. Not necessarily the person, not necessarily the um, the things that we had achieved and it was just the idea the imagination because be, because he said he wanted to be a pre- better person so i believed him and i supported him as best as i could through everything and this is jail time house raids my house has been raided about three times uh two at one location and one at another location his alcoholism as well drug use um just a bunch of, you know, different things that were very, very unhealthy. And I didn't enjoy any of those things. I, I didn't, didn't drink myself. I wasn't a smoker. I didn't do drugs. Um, occasional drinking. One moment, buddy. One moment. Um, and I 
I held on to that toxicity for such a long time just because that's what he exhibited. He wanted to have a better life. And there were those ups and downs where he'll be sober and he'll want to enroll himself into any type of recovery program. But he was a very, very good actor. And I always believed what he was doing was going to continue to further him to be a healthier person. And it just never progressed to that level of like, okay, this is this is healthy for, for all of us now. And then it finally came to a point in 2016 where I where I told him I was like, okay, let's just start fresh. You know, let's have let's have a fresh slate. We'll move, we'll get you can get another job, we'll start all over. And then by the beginning of 2017, um, he was doing okay, but by April, he relapsed, and then our house got raided for the third time, and I found out that he um, he went on a, I don't know what it would be called, like a, like a robbery spree, I guess, with some other people, and my house, again, got raided, and it was just... Um, the turning point for me because I gave it that was like the final atom of the final straw of you know just all those chances Mom. and to to um, not be to, to have him break his promise about you know this being the the final thing I was just mind blown because that I broke up with him right when the SWAT team kind of had him in handcuffs already and I was just like, you know what? I'm done. I don't care to hear your excuses. I don't care to hear anything. And like just breaking up with breaking up in with him in front of all of those people kind of just propelled me to um, take thing take myself more seriously. So when we were um, starting to clean up, you know, like the 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 SWAT team broke everything and they went through everything to try and look for as much evidence as possible and just coming to that like I don't know it felt like it felt like all these chains were just taken off of me I didn't feel heavy anymore I felt so relaxed and I was like this is so weird because this is such a traumatizing day but to feel relaxed and to feel empowered I was like oh this is this is different to finally like just step up for myself, you know? It was it was such a nice feeling. Mom, I didn't like the daddy. Mm. Yeah, my, I'm very transparent with my kids. So they definitely know my story. And um, just because, especially with, with this is yeah. Sterling. Say hi. We heard it when when yeah. at, at, can you can you get him with me? Sterling. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So um uh, yeah, so I, they're, they're, my kids are very aware of um, the history because they were there for the third raid. They were present. And of course, you know, as a child, you're going to be like, what is going on? Why are all these people like breaking into my house? Why are they hurting my dad? Why are all of these things that aren't normal happening? And why can yeah, I see it? So <laughs> yeah, it's not normal, right? So <laughs> <laughs> he's such a cutie he um there were there were that that day that specific day was was what turned everything around for me um yeah just definitely just definitely uh the thing that is normal is having a full family yeah that's true but we're, we're a full family <laughs> um okay buddy you can take your you can take your things over there to mama's room sterling go Please, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so just definitely stand, standing up for myself and um, implementing those boundaries. Oh my gosh, that was life changing. And then from there, from 2017 and onward, I was I I was able to continue to enforce boundaries. But then, when it happened with another person, I don't think you I don't think I shared that point with you, did I? In, no. in regard to, so there was um, I got into another relationship in 2018, and that gentleman was 
somebody who I wasn't expecting. He acted like he was such a such a nice person and then turned out to be like some type of con artist type of dude. He ended up stalking me when I broke up with him, forced uh forced SEX as well. Um what did he do? Thousands of missed calls with in regard to the stalking. He attempted suicide twice, where I had to literally cut him down from his line, call the police and, you know, the, the entire works just to make sure we're all safe. Um, and then I found him in my house in October 2018, like kind of around this time, actually, yeah. Uh, so I found him in my house because I could smell his cigarette smoke. I could smell his body odor. I'm like, whoa, what is going on? Why do I smell all of these things? from him and turns out he was hanging out in the house and just I guess like using my resources there because I wasn't home for a while I was helping my mother with my grandmother's um I think our her her first anniversary like funeral or rosary arrangements where we have prayers and I was just so like stressed out from the day to and then to come home to that I called him and I said hey if you're in here you need to leave and when he came out, he was holding a machete and a machete is a long knife, like, right? So all I could find was like a pot next to the kitchen sink. And I was like, oh no. So I, I still remained calm, but I went back into my car. I called the police and I was like, hey, I don't know what to do, but I know he's gonna run out because he has this duffel bag next to the door. What what do I do? They're like, you, the police were saying that you can't do anything because um there's no proof you can try to record him I'm like I can't record him because I'm talking to you guys I'm talking to you guys on the phone so I ended up chasing him down and trying to figure out okay like I need to really definitely get something going here right and it was just such a wild goose chase nothing after that couldn't couldn't book him for anything they didn't find him and then months later after that um I saw him walking on the street and Basically, just to cut that story short, I assisted the marshals in arresting him um, because I was able to like go house to house and canvas where he was live, living at. And uh, one of the, ugh, I I just can't explain how good it felt to see him get arrested. I felt I feel I still feel bad saying that it feels good to see someone get arrested, but. Um, that was another major life lesson. And I was like, oh my gosh, I thought I was done with all of this boyfriend drama, you know? And I definitely know that it's something that I needed to accept for myself is because I allowed all of these things to happen. But once I also figured out that I'm probably going through this in order to assist somebody else, some, some way, somehow, I just got to power through it and just stay positive and learn from my lessons. So fast forward to about 2019, my best friend needed help. And it was all of those similar things. Her, her other half was addicted to drugs. Her other half was, um, how would you say, introducing her to some drug usage as well. So, you know, once I saw those signs, I was like, ooh, girl, like, if you need help, please let me know. Let me know that you need help and ask me for help because I'm not going to force this assistance onto your life. If you don't want it, I'm going to, you stay in your business. But as your friend, I love you and I know you deserve better. I know you want better for your life. If you need help, I'm here. Let's do this. And then, you know, turns out that all of those things that sh that I went through is what she was going through as well so it saved her months and months of turmoil and trauma <laughs> because I already went through it so I was like okay I know what to do I know how to get her out of this and instead of months of that type of struggle got her out of it in about a week weeks or two weeks so it saves so much time. And I just started crying like, okay, this is why I'm going through all of this stuff. This is, this is why I'm going through all this struggle. It's to help people. It's to share my story. And um, it's to ad advance the world, you know, because there's so many reasons, especially here on our island of Guam, a lot of our systems aren't connected. Like let's say the judicial system, the police system, 
ambulance system, all of those, those are all very independent systems. And in order to get any type of assistance, we have to call those individual networks rather than, you know, an, an entire system working together. And it sucks because it's very scary. Someone can lose their life right away. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a very fun place to be. But um, no. you know, I, so I want to talk about a few things that, that you brought up in your story. Sure. And the first one um, was the relief that you felt when your first, you know, the father of your children was, was, you know, being taken away and you're like, I'm done. Like, this is it. I'm, I'm so over this. I can't take it anymore. And a lot of people don't realize just how freeing and liberating and like you said, empowering it can be to actually make a choice for yourself. So a lot of times, you know, women, we're in these abusive relationships and we keep staying because we think that we can change. We have an idea of what a relationship is supposed to look like or, you know, we have expectations and we keep holding out hope that, you know, things will change, especially because the people that are typically the abusers you know, they, um, they go through the remorse process and they say, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean it. I'll never do it again. And it's just a, a, a repeating cycle, right? I mean, right. I can't tell you how many times I heard that growing up, you know, like, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean it. I don't know what I was thinking, you know, and it's just the excuses and you want to believe them you, because we don't want to believe that we made a mistake. And I think that's the True. biggest problem is we don't want to believe that we did something wrong and that we chose the wrong person. Right, and right. These people, they really beat us down and they make us believe like, you know, oh my God, I must have done that. And like, and especially, you know, with the whole victim blaming, right? You know, you get the victim right. blaming, you know, you must have done something. And this is like, the, these are things that I heard growing up my entire life, you must have done something to deserve it. What did you do to deserve it? You know, like, you must have said something wrong, you must have acted wrong, and there must be something right. wrong with you. And so we start to believe that there's something wrong with us and that, you know, we're the, the ones that are to blame. And so we just keep putting up with it. Yeah. And, and, then, and then, then it gets normal, then it gets normal, and you get kind of numb to it. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I guess, you know, I guess this is just how things are. But then when when I would think to myself, like, I know I'm worthy of change. I know I'm worthy of being treated better. I know that I'm worthy of, I didn't really have a problem with like loving myself because I know I loved myself, but I didn't, I, I had a problem with, yeah, just releasing that idea yeah. that, that this other person could be better for me. But I also didn't, uh, I also held on to the idea of um, feeling like, yes, I'm, I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm enough. I, I know I'm valuable enough for this person to change when I should have let go of the um, thought that I, I can't control anybody, you know? So um, going, going through that and getting past that was a really big deal for me. Yeah. And the next one was, you know, you setting boundaries. Yes. Oh, yes. A lot of people really struggle with setting boundaries because they feel like, um, and this was a big one for me too, you know, if I set a boundary, then I'm going to make somebody mad, you know, right. so going to be mm -hmm. upset with me. And, you know, if I ask them to stick with it, then they're really going to be upset with me. But honestly, a lot of people don't understand that it's really healthy to set boundaries. Yeah. It's unhealthy for both people, for you to set a boundary and to let the other person cross it continually, you know, because right. you're letting them know that it's okay to abuse you, you know, it's okay for them to treat you the way they are, you know, so it's really important that, you know, you set healthy boundaries and you make the distinction, you draw the line in the, in the sand and you say, look, this is where it ends and this is where I'm done. Like, I can't deal with this anymore and I won't tolerate it. I mean, even to this day, I have a couple of narcissistic relationships in my life that I, unfortunately, I just cannot divest myself from. So because of that, I've set very strict boundaries because, like, I just can't deal with it. Um, and then, you know, recognizing the signs. So you've gone through this. 
And now you're in a place where this is kind of, you know, the whole point of. Okay, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm talking to Miss Crystal, okay? You have to go stay in Mama's house, in Mama's room. It's not going to take, I know, but you're just coloring. It's not going to take too long, okay? Okay, I'm just going to be I'm so sorry. My brother leaves tomorrow morning. So we're all here at my mom's house just hanging out. So everyone's kind of like coming in and out out of the kitchen and just like recording, recording. <laughs> you know, um, that's the way. Yeah, definitely. Know. Life isn't perfect. It's <laughs> you know, we have an idea in our heads that we want it to be perfect, um, but it, it never, it's never. Anyway, so, you know, recognizing the signs. So, you know, you've been through these relationships and you see you know, when people start, like, you kind of see what's going on. And so you were able to help your friend. And oh, now yeah. you've kind of decided, like, this is something you want to do, you really want to help people. And that's kind of, you know, the point of my channel is like, I teach mindfulness. And it's really important for people to be aware, because I can't tell you how many times like, I know, the neighbors knew what was going on in our house. Right. But nobody ever did anything. Nobody stood up, nobody said anything. And it was like, that TV show that they had on the re uh, reality TV show where they would like put people in scenarios and like they would be in a restaurant and people would get in a fight. Oh, yes. Uh, how or what would you do or something like that? Like, yeah. <laughs> would react kind of thing. And, and most of the time people just would like could just blindly ignore, you know, the things that are going on because the people just don't want to get involved. And I think it's right. really sad because – you know, if more people actually decided, and that's the thing, decided that they wanted to help other people and, you know, keep them from being harmed or, you know, in these horrible relationships, or a lot of people think like, it's not my place. You know, I have a sister who is in an abusive relationship <clears throat> and I, as much as I really wanted to tell her, look, this is how it, it should be. This is how you should do things. I, I couldn't, I could just say, look, I'm here when you need me. I know what you're going through, but you have to, you know, yeah. places on your own. Unfortunately we yeah. can't. And, and a lot of times we want to, you know, push people. And it, so it was like, you know, what you said with your friend, like, I'm here. If you need me, I've been through it. I know what you're going through, please, you know, but I need you to ask me for help. And, and that's yeah. really, really important that we just say, look, I see what's going on. And I'm here for you. And I recognize, you know, that you're struggling and, and I want to help you, but I can't help you if you don't ask for help. That's really, really. Yeah. And then like with me, if someone said that to me when I was in my state of denial, I'll be like, oh no, I'm fine, girl. Don't even bother. I'm okay. That was my mentality because I felt that things were genuinely fine because nobody, nobody in my family grew up around drug use in regard to methamphetamines or anything. So none of us knew what those signs were, but there were some family members who had some hints or they felt something was off. It was unhealthy. So they'll try to talk to me about it, but didn't really know how to approach it and say like, Hey, I think your boyfriend's on drugs. You know, they, they couldn't really um, make it as as plain and simple as that because we didn't grow up around those types of things but when when i asked my friend i was like are you using drugs or are is, is anybody around you? you know just asking really simple plain and clear questions it's like okay i need the answer right now and if you want help if you want my answers and my strategies on how to get healthier i'm here yeah because yeah. like and she she was in a state of denial for a little bit but after she continued to continually saw things that i was pointing out um she got more and more familiar with there there were even some um how would you say serendipitous things that would happen regarding the the person that she was with so let's say i was i was in a business meeting and i saw his photo like a wanted poster in in their office i took a pic i asked the i asked my client i was like hey could i really just take a quick picture of this because i think this is my friend's boyfriend so i took a picture and i was like girl you need to see this you know so things like that it just shows that it shows me too that the, those signs are stronger and stronger that what i'm doing is 
for the right purpose and I'm on the right track and I do need to continue to push her to show her that she needs assistance because seeing someone's face that you don't are you know you're trying to have someone else get away away from it's like okay that's a major sign we need to take that into consideration (laughs) yeah yeah all right so then I really want to talk quickly about um so you know, you've been through all this stuff and then you've managed to turn this basically into an amazing business. So, I mean, you're now a successful entrepreneur. So you you didn't let any of this hold you back. You actually used it as fuel to push you forward. So, you know, tell, tell us a little bit about, about your business and what you do and and about the book. Cause I'd really like, sure. you know, okay. Yeah, that. definitely. Well, I've, um, I have been studying business since I was in high school. Yes, high school. And um, (laughs) you did guess it right. And uh, yeah, I think since I was a sophomore, so about 10th grade. And um, I've had, I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit, spirit. So I would continue to study it. Even um, I join different, different types of contests and things like that. Uh, thank you. Hello. <laughs> I joined different types of business contests and um, course, take courses. So I was one of the younger ones in um, the business training classes uh, that were happening at the university. And uh I, I then started my business after high school and I got pregnant when I was a senior in high school also. So my I had a lot of things. Oh my goodness. Let <laughs> me go sit down. Um, so with, with that too, I've, I've just continued to achieve so much, even with all the, the um, struggles that I've been through. Because I didn't really let anything stop me. I've always had a nice, positive attitude, even through the suicidal ideation, even through the sexual abuse and the grooming and everything like that. I've always had a positive attitude. But even though things were still fine to me, of course, I still felt those darker feelings, right? So I... I fell in love with just like planning events and seeing people come together. So my older business is called Fund Forte and it's an events agency. So with that, I really just harnessed all my energy and like creative stuff and making decorations and planning events for people, uh, planning fundraisers, different types of things like that. And that's the business that, um, yes, you did. Uh, That's the business that propelled me uh, towards getting all the different awards and um, the uh, like island-wide success as well. And then during during the lockdown, of course, you know, events and the pandemic don't go hand in hand. So um, we had to pivot. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just continuing to uh, digitize a lot of my programs. And instead of me being the person going out to do all these events, I'm just trying to train people on how they can prep themselves for when lockdown and quarantine and the pandemic kind of sizzles down. So that way I have a a team that's going to back me that has already been trained through the, through the quarantine and will be, they'll be able to be certified and represent my company. But even with that, I was like, man, you know, I think I can focus on something that's going to be a little bit more fun, something that that I'm going to be able to also pursue my other passions with, which are uh, more art related and creative writing related. And I've been writing my book since the end of the year or last year. And I was like, I think I'm ready. You know, I think I'm going to fast forward this and just get it done because it's, it's not, it's going to take me such a long time if I continue to go at my own pace. So I really just kind of like skyrocketed and I was like, yes, I can do so much. And I got so much stuff done in September. And then the book is going to be ready for print, I think in about uh, November 2nd. And then um, so that company is called Beauty Collabs, and I love working with other people, and then I love science and experiments, so the name play is kind of all in there. So I really enjoy all the different projects that are coming about. Um, I've, I've tested some things with my social media posts, and people love it. You know, just like sharing your rawness and your realness, and then the coaches that I have, the mentors that I have, they, they love the work that I'm doing. They love the tracks that I'm on. 
So I'm getting really good results with with both businesses. And I have an article, I think, coming out in about a few hours um, regarding how people can plan their parties during quarantine a little bit more safely, as well as still trying to remain in that level of fun that everybody wants to still get. So there's a lot of fun things happening. And, you know, we just got to go with the flow during the pandemic and really just try to also remember to implement self-care while we're trying to stay busy. Because those, uh, you know, there's going to be those days where we end up getting a bit more flustered or things like this where family family's going to be around and we can't really you know like concentrate as laser focused as we usually are and we're just going to have to um, enjoy their presence and enjoy their company because we don't know we don't know when yeah. we don't live yeah. by the the disease or not you know so um just embracing all of that and embracing the here and now is something that i'm really enjoying awesome well, I really take, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Um, and I appreciate Sterling taking the time today, too. <laughs> you know, I love yeah. that, you know, I mean, it's, like you said, it's raw and real. You know, we're all people, we all have families. Hi, Sterling. Um, you know, I mean, it's life, right? Life isn't perfect. Life is messy. And, you know, I'm, I'm, really trying to help people understand that like we, we really need to try to get away from perfection and this Definitely. idea that perfection exists and you know just enjoy life as it is you know, take you know i even time. forgot my makeup and i was like never mind i'm gonna have fun i'm just gonna be me gonna you, be know, you look awesome <laughs> so do you <laughs> i like to just do my eyebrows a little bit especially for the camera <laughs> in the morning here it's like what 7 30 where you are there about 8 30 at night yeah on a on a wednesday i think yeah it's so it's 6 30 a.m here and it's 8 30 p.m oh. there. <laughs> oh, thanks, for, thanks for being up for me so fun oh that's i get up at 4 30 every day anyway me, oh yeah you yes we discussed that yeah me too i'm a 4 30 year not every day though but i do most days <laughs> but um you know i i really appreciate you know you taking the time and you know telling us your story because i know sharing things like that can be difficult um a lot of people you know they they have a hard time being vulnerable and saying like look i i messed up i you know did things wrong i made mistakes um but the thing is that we can't regret what happened to us because if we do then we'll never we'll never get over oh, yeah. it yeah yeah, definitely. And see, the thing about it is once I started sharing my story and my experiences with people, that is what opened my eyes because a lot of people were just like, uh, beauty, that's not normal. Um, hello, you need to go get help. And I was just like, why? I, you know, I'm fine. I'm not like physically hurt all the time. Right. So then when you when you really think about it it's like oh dang i guess i guess it's really bad then if if you guys feel like it's bad and i guess because once we tell our story and it hurts the hearts of the people that we love they're just like nope i don't want i don't want to see you go through those kinds of things yeah yeah it's okay for us to go through it, but we don't want someone yeah. else to suffer for us right right yeah because if, if one of my friends told me that i'll just be like oh my gosh girl let's go get you some help you know so definitely now that i'm more aware and i'm trained as well to see those different signs of um irregular behavioral health or you know just any type of depression signs or signs of suicidal ideation or signs of isolation or anything like that then um those those are the red flags for me that makes me want to just continue the discussion and be open about it because I'm, I'm always telling my family and friends like hey if you if you need ever ever need help I'm always there you can call me I'll come to you within within healthy boundaries though yeah. <laughs> so I definitely still um, enforce that as as well as trying to help as best I can if they aren't able to understand how to like help themselves first. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, again, I really appreciate your time today. I appreciate your story. And I'm really looking forward to um, seeing the book and, you know, sharing it Thank with the audience you. because I, I think it's something that's definitely much needed. And a lot more people need to take time for self care and, and to do things, you know, to, to practice self love more. Um, you know, we give, we give, 
to mm -hmm. everybody and we, we don't take for ourselves and you know you can't fill from an empty cup so absolutely you know, I'm like super super big on, on making sure that you fill your cup first before you fill others so yeah and that's something that I didn't do before so now that I know <laughs> I'm always making sure like even with my business friends I'm just like please make sure you schedule in some you time and some relaxation time because nobody wants to hear the that b word of burnout right <laughs> you don't want to hear it and you sure don't want to feel it that's for right. certain so. exactly thank you so much <laughs> I really appreciate your time you know thank you so much and um so um anybody that's watching this you know i will have the links for beauty's websites and to be able to purchase your book um, on the in the comments for the link description so you know feel free to give it a look and check it out and you know help support an amazing entrepreneur and you know help end the suffering of the world absolutely thank you so much everybody all right thanks this is a adios from guam <laughs> yeah all right thanks again i appreciate it thank you too